When you compress a gas like air, it gets hot. But the opposite is also true. If I take a compressed gas and then let it expand, it gets colder. So we're reading around 72 degrees Fahrenheit in the room right now, but watch what happens when I blow air over it. It gets around 56 degrees Fahrenheit. But this isn't always true. I'll show you a gas that actually gets hotter when it expands and how this knowledge is being used to save lives by killing cancer and tumor cells in the body. To understand this, we have to learn a few things about gases. The first thing is that unlike a liquid, a gas doesn't have a definite volume. This is the volume of nine grams of water. And this is the volume of nine grams of air. But the only reason this is the volume of nine grams of air is because this is the size of container I put the air in. If I put it in a larger container like this, then it'll have this volume. Since I vacuum the air out of this container, if I just connect the two, then all of the air from this container will now mix between the two, and now this will be the volume of nine grams of air. In fact, there's really no limit to how much volume this air can take up, but there's a trade-off. So when a gas goes from a smaller volume to a larger volume, its pressure and temperature decrease. This seems to make intuitive sense. The gas had a certain amount of energy and that energy is now spread to a much larger volume. So the pressure and temperature drop. So when gases expand, they cool down, end of story. But maybe not. This helium tank is sitting here at room temperature. So we got room temperature 73.9, open the valve, and it quickly increases to 75.4. It's actually warming as it's coming out, not cooling. But how could this be? This flies in the face of our intuition that expanding things should get colder, not warmer. The reason that this effect happens was key in developing one of the most fundamental laws of the universe, the first law of thermodynamics. In the early 1840s, the English physicist James Joule was motivated by the idea that different forms of energy like mechanical energy and heat are interconvertible and that the total energy of an isolated system remains constant. He had recently done his famous paddle wheel experiment that showed that mechanical work is converted to heat. In this experiment, Joule stirred water in a container using a paddle wheel. The mechanical work done by the rotation of the paddle wheel was converted into an increase in the temperature of the water. To solidify this concept, the conservation of energy, he performed an experiment almost exactly the same as what we did with the valves here. He found that when a gas expands across a valve, the total energy remains constant. But that doesn't mean that the temperature doesn't change. When you open the valve, the change in temperature divided by the change in pressure is always constant. This constant was called the Joule-Thompson coefficient. If the Joule-Thompson coefficient is positive, then the gas expands and the temperature drops. But there are some gases that have a negative Joule-Thompson coefficient at room temperature. These gases are hydrogen, helium, and neon. That's it. This means that when the pressure drops across the valve and the gas expands, the temperature actually increases. For the temperature to increase, this means that the average kinetic energy of the gas molecules needs to increase. So they need to gain energy somehow. So where does the energy come from? Well, the energy was actually hidden within the intramolecular bonds. And when these bonds break, it releases the stored potential energy. To understand what I mean, let's begin by considering the scenario with an ideal gas. An ideal gas is similar to a collection of non-interacting particles colliding with each other without attractive or repulsive forces between each other. But the real gases are not like little balls bumping into each other. They're more like magnets that can be attracted and repelled from each other, depending on their orientation and distance from each other. So when a gas is compressed together tightly, the gas particles will be slightly attracted to each other or repelled. This gives some potential energy. And when you release them through the valve, then they release that potential energy. What this means physically is that for helium at this temperature, the repulsive forces between the helium atoms dominate. So that when I lit them through the valve, they fly apart even with more speed than they had to begin with. So their average kinetic energy is increased. So their temperature increases. But for a gas like nitrogen, like in air, the attractive forces are huge compared to the kinetic energy of the molecules. So the gas needs to take some kinetic energy to break those forces. 
and that slows the gas down. So for nitrogen at room temperature, it gets colder when you expand it through a valve. Now I mentioned that only three gases have a negative Joule-Thompson coefficient, but this is only because we're doing this experiment at room temperature. The Joule-Thompson coefficient is temperature dependent. Past 600 Kelvin, even nitrogen will heat up when it expands through a valve. In fact, once any gas gets hot enough, it will heat even more when you expand it through a valve, not cool down. Now at this point, it's important to note that this type of expansion through a valve is different than if we had a gas that was just expanding into the atmosphere or pushing against a piston. When a gas expands into the atmosphere, the gas has to push back the atmosphere. This requires work. So the environment steals some of the kinetic energy of the gas molecules and the temperature always decreases. So in this helium tank, for example, the helium inside the tank does do work to accelerate the gas through the throttle. So the overall temperature of the helium in the tank drops, but the temperature after it leaves the throttle is a little higher than inside the tank. So overall, the helium tank is cooling as it empties, even though the gas on the outlet of the throttle is always at a higher temperature than the inlet. Now the fact that different gases can get hotter or colder when passed through a throttle seems like some abstract useless fact. But this fact is actually used to kill cancer cells and tumors in the body. There's a method of ablating cells that has been developed called argon helium cryoablation. In these devices, there's a fine needle inserted into the area where they want to kill the cancer cells. Argon gas is then released from a high pressure zone to a low pressure zone inside the needle and then vented to the atmosphere. Since argon has a positive Joule-Thompson coefficient, it quickly cools the needles to less than minus 150 degrees Celsius and lowers the surrounding tissue to more than negative 20 degrees Celsius. And then the probe is switched to helium, which has a negative Joule-Thompson coefficient. So when it expands, it rapidly heats the tissue to 20 to 40 degrees Celsius. These rapid temperature changes can lead to coagulation and necrosis of the tumor tissue. So this method is very target specific and could kill tumors in a very local area without hurting the surrounding tissue. It's amazing that such an abstract fact of physics like this can be put to use to save lives. So next time you fill up a balloon with helium, you can take pride in the fact that you know the temperature in the balloon is warmer than the helium inside the tank. And that knowledge can save lives. One other thing to know is that Joule Thompson expansion is not the reason why these duster cans get really cold when you spray them either. The reason these get cold is because they have a liquid in them and when the liquid boils to repressurize the can when you spray it out, it cools it down very quickly. So just by having the liquid evaporate, the can gets very cold. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you learned something. Now if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, remember to hit the subscribe button so that you can be notified when I release my latest video. And thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.